Listen, unlike a lot of people, I just am not kidding about this big booty girl thing. Hi, I'm Mark, and this is Subliteral Network. I make art and comics, and thanks for watching. Remember to hit like and subscribe, and to leave your feedback in the comments. I post art daily, five days a week, on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. And this is our roundup of that work, in case you missed it, uh, with a little more detailed description added. You can read my Uno the Cable Bunny comics free at radiocomics.com, and uh, please visit my Patreon page if you'd like to support my work. Now, all these links are in my description and bio, and uh, please watch till the end so you don't miss anything. This is part of a painting that I did when I used to do these art streams uh, on uh, a site called Picarto, which is where a lot of artists uh, stream their art. Uh, and for the life of me, I cannot find uh, the original piece of this. I think it might have just got lost in the shuffle somehow. So what this was what, uh, originally was this. This is a piece of line work that I originally drew on craft paper, which is a uh, brown paper. It's the same paper that, uh, you know, like a, a grocery bag is made of. So I scanned it in and I fiddled with it in Photoshop to produce a piece of uh, black line work with a light background. So this is the only remaining copy that I have of this. Uh, and, you know, I guess I'm just going to have to repaint it uh, if I can't find the original because I really love the way that blue color came out. Blue against a kind of a medium uh, dark uh, space background and you can see the um, the tentacle the monster is kind of a little purplish. The colors were coming out really nice and I'm really sorry that I lost this piece and I will use the small snip that I have as a guide to restart it uh, and to repaint this one. Here's a piece of a full-size uh, comic book art that I'm working on. A lot of people are working uh, on in digital media now and there are just some great uh, ink pens and techniques and stuff that you can use. But I still find a lot of people produce work that looks very sketchy uh, and I don't uh, I don't really prefer that too much. I would it seems like a holdover from the days when uh, monthly comics were produced on a deadline and the work had to get out. So over time, there have been shortcuts that people do in their art, uh, kind of a lack of a sophisticated line work or a kind of a tossed off sketchy quality, which was fine, I guess, if you were under deadline, uh, but it still isn't good. And you, uh, I really want to try to return to the idea that when you do this work I want to do like a more sophisticated sharp and controlled line work with kind of a lot of uh, a feeling for uh, the direction of the light a feeling of a refinement of line and I'm finding that is really hard to do and it takes a long time to do which is probably why people end up being reluctant to do it uh, but well, well, when I'm doing comics this is my goal for the art, and this is a piece of, uh, it's, it's a step along the way. And I thought this uh, part of the panel turned out the way that I wanted it to. After a couple of tries, you know, I'm scraping stuff off, I'm re-inking. Uh, but that is my goal with it, and that is how I want to approach it when I do uh, kind of a full-fledged comic effort. Here's another panel from that uh, comic that I'm working on that, again, I had those goals of I want to make a more sophisticated graphic approach. I want to use uh, vanishing points and perspective more to get a feeling of depth in the picture. Uh, just, I, I want to employ a number of classic comic book techniques from penciling to inking uh, to just sort of make a more sophisticated looking kind of comic graphically. Uh, I put a little color on it uh, for the Photoshop post. No, none of it is colored yet. But um, one thing, okay, you can see Skipper there with her body modifications. And I felt like putting a character in there that was just sort of an outrage. Uh, she's a, I guess, a space pirate or something. It's not really clear 100%. And her uh, partner and co-pilot is over there on the other side. But I wanted her to make an immediate visual impact and like as a character she knows the effect it has on people and she doesn't mind 
uh, the attention or and she uses it to put people off balance because I think sort of in in, in her business in the business of uh, shady deals it helps to have a one-up on the competition or on the people you're negotiating with so she's using the opportunity to create a little uh, a lack of security a, a, a sort of off-putting effect that's that she's going to use to uh, help her position and that is why I sort of did this I want uh, plus when when I'm doing comics, I, I realized one day, I said, why don't you just fill it with stuff that you want to draw and build a story around that? And that has been extremely helpful in uh, maintaining my motivation and my interest uh, and uh, my sort of passion for the work. You don't want to draw pages and pages of people sitting around drinking coffee or talking or just standing there on the phone. Uh, that is incredibly boring. And... I don't think comics should be so visually dull. I don't enjoy it. A lot of people do, but uh, I am not one of them. One thing I use my mini comics for is to try to sharpen up my composition and just sort of uh, sharpen up my uh, skills to tell a story uh, in pictures and to uh, compose a page that kind of leads the eye and helps you to uh, uh, follow the story more easily and uh, clearly. And that is, um, and plus they don't take that long to do, so I can try out ideas and get results quickly that help me with uh, other comics that uh, I've, I end up doing. So, uh, Lord Slugman is like this big, blobby, sloppy uh, conqueror, you know. He's kind of a goofball in a way, because he's so intense, and I like the, the what I ended up doing was giving him this language that uh, you think of it, you know, it's like an alien language, but what it really is is him just speaking a crude kind of curse-laden English that I change all the spellings on and the emphases. And I, I don't know, I found it funny as hell when I would do it, and I'm constantly thinking of things for uh, Lord Slugman to say, because then I change it and you, you can't see it, but you know what he's saying. So usually I'll do these mini comics at uh, like five and a half by eight and a half inches, on cardstock and this one was done all in sharpies uh, just uh, because I was into my sharpie phase at the time and I never got out of it you know, I really find them really useful plus it's I had a thing where I wasn't thinking of sharpies as a serious drawing material uh, uh, drawing material I just said oh it's just for sketching and I'm just gonna have fun with it and it really loosened me up and helped me to not be intimidated by the art that I'm doing uh, I think because I knew I was only going to reach a certain amount of quality with it, but I tried to get as much graphic quality as I could out of them when I work with them. And it's a funny thing. The mind is weird that way. If I have a blank sheet of expensive, uh, nice paper and nice tools, there's a factor I have to overcome. You know, I feel like I have to be excellent. And like, that's a drag because what you really, you, you want to be good, but you want to have fun at what you're doing too. And Sharpies... Uh, are really fun. Now the reason I made these little snips of uh, pieces of art was to make little square ads for like my Patreon page or uh, my YouTube channel and that was a uh, I have a bunch of these hanging around that I had slated to just get disposed of but uh, I just ended up keeping them and this is one of them. It started out as a sharpie drawing on just some scrap paper uh, well, not a Sharpie drawing, it was a pencil drawing, and then I said, why don't you just make that into something, and so I did. Uh, again, this is one of those pieces where I lost the original and I cannot find it. Even though I keep pretty good organization and, and uh, storage of my art, somehow still, I think it's Gremlins. I, I don't know how to uh, account for that, but I looked for it, the whole thing, and I could not find it. What I did find was another snip that I had made, and uh, what I ended up doing was this, just combining them together into a partial picture. I'm going to have to look and see if I can even find the original Sharpie drawing, or maybe I'll just draw another version of it. Because I tried to, one thing I tried to do was to do a little bit of unusual lighting. Um, because I had been getting very predictable with uh, the kind of lighting that I was putting on these figures. So I have like a sun down in the bottom of the picture that's in the background, and a second a softer light source, maybe from the sky or an explosion or something, 
coming on top of her. I like that so much that I want to do that again. So I think it's probably worth a redraw uh, in uh, kind of a more, maybe a more sophisticated kind of style with a better line work. I love the racing stripe. You know, she's actually on a motorcycle, but uh, that, because the whole drawing is gone, the whole painting is gone, that part is kind of missing forever. So, I'll, I'll, you know, I'll have to redraw the bike. But I think this is a piece that has potential and uh, it's probably worth me taking another shot, uh, you know, from top to bottom.